Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kalyan and today's lecture is on Rational and Principles of Endodontics. The learning outcomes for this lecture are to discuss the rational of endodontic treatment and theory of focal infection, identify major pathways of entry for pulpal and periapical infection and response of pulpal and periapical tissues to irritants, describe the endodontic Im implications as explained by Fish and Cronfield's mountain pass theory. We look at history at a brief in 1890 wd miller was the first person to associate bacteria with pulpal and periapical tissues in 1904 f billing gave the theory of focus of infection in 1909 ec rose now described the focus of infection traveling through bloodstream and associated them with degenerative diseases william hunter promoted the extraction of all pulpless tooth and endodontically treated tooth the focus of infection theory states that the localized or generalized infection like rheumatoid arthritis is caused by bacteria traveling through bloodstream from a distant focus of infection. The focus for being example infected tooth, infected adenoids or tonsils. So this theory has gained a lot of popularity during the 19th century, early and mid 19th century, where they have extracted um, the infected tooth. Um, uh, removed adenoids and tonsils based upon the assumption that infection from these sites can spread through bloodstream and cause infection at far away sites or cause degenerative changes at far away sites from these um, original sites so but this theory is completely refuted now one of the theory which refutes the focus of infection theory is a theory by fish who describes the periapical infection as having four zones of infection. So, but uh, these um, four zones of infection, we are going to discuss in detail during the later part of the lecture. Uh, before that, let's look at the rationale of doing endodontic treatment. Fish states that by removing the nidus of infection, it will lead to complete resolution of periapical infection. This became the basis for successful endodontic therapy. So what do we achieve by uh, endodontic treatment? In endodontic therapy, we remove the uh, irreversibly inflamed vital and necrotic pulp. After removing it, we replace this dead space by an inert filling material and achieve a three-dimensional seal and totally seal of the coronal and apical area. By doing this, we, um, we achieve a complete repair of periapical tissues. Now this tooth which has been root canal treated now can function normally inside the oral cavity provided the periodontium is healthy. So this is the ration of doing the endodontic treatment. Now, let's look at the pathogenicity of the bacteria in causing the periapical infection. So, the uh, microbes or bacteria cause periapical infection by three uh, steps. The first step is by invasion, second by multiplication and third by pathogenicity. So, coming to invasion, the bacteria gain access to the pulp through various routes the first being the open cavity second the dentinal tubules then by gingival sulcus or periodontal ligament or through the bloodstream or through the broken faulty or defective restoration through extension of periapical infection from the adjacent infected teeth so this is a picture which explains uh, or shows uh, various um, routes of entry of uh, microorganisms into the pulp. You can see they can gain access through an uh, carious cavity or it can gain access when there is a loss of enamel and cementum and dent uh, dentinal tubules are exposed. It can also gain access through the periapical area or lateral, peri uh, lateral canals or fractures, trauma or anything. So once they gain access into the then they rapidly multiply and exert their pathogenic activity. Then uh, what are the tissue changes which occur following the inflammation? These tissue changes can be uh, grouped into two, uh, two changes. One is degenerative and the second one is proliferative changes. Degenerative changes usually occur when the microorganisms are uh, more virulent and more in number and as well when uh, the host tissue response is uh, compromised. So the in degenerative changes, what you observe is a necrosis. Uh, which is usually caused by thrombosis of blood vessels or leukotoxins um, which um, due to tissue cell damage so other than necrosis you also see suppuration uh, suppuration is mainly by um, pm neutrophils which are injured which release the proteolytic enzymes and cause liquefaction of the 
dead tissue so you uh, we will see pus formation and abscess formation in degenerative changes whereas in proliferative changes um, uh, the irritants here are very mild so they in turn may act as stimulants in the center of the inflammatory area the in irritant is strong enough to produce destruction but at the periphery the irritant is mild to stimulate proliferation so what we see is formation of granulation tissue in proliferative changes so coming back to the fish zones of infection fish uh, what he did is that he drilled holes in uh, the jaws of guinea pigs and at the and then loaded these uh, holes uh, with um, uh, bacteria uh, bacteria laded uh, woolen fibers and then after a uh, few weeks he sacrificed these animals and cut the jaws and examined under uh, the microscope so what he uh, when he examined under the microscope around these cotton wools what he saw is four zones four zones of infection he said he described these four zones as zone of necrosis zones of contamination zone of irritation and zone of stimulation zone of necrosis is the most central zone followed by zone of contamination and in the periphery we have irritation and stimulation so let's look at zone of neck infection zone of infection is the most central zone where these cotton wool fibers are placed uh, here it is labeled as site a so at um, in zone of uh, infection uh, we see a large amount of necrosis and is characterized mainly by neutrophils so the contents of the zone of necrosis are mainly microorganisms neutrophils you may see dead cells protein decomposition products because there is a lot of fighting happening here between the microorganisms and neutrophils we also see a lot of exotoxins and endotoxins released by the bacteria and presence of enzymes so this is the central zone where um, the major uh, activity is happening so after the zone of infection second zone is a zone of contamination here the microorganisms are not there but we can see the toxins which are released by the microorganisms there is also characterized by presence of a round cell infiltration and lymphocytes are present everywhere so as we go from um, uh, zone of infection uh, to slightly outwards we don't see microorganisms and what we see more here are only toxins so that is about zone of contamination coming to the third zone which is a zone of irritation here labeled as c which is characterized by more macrophages and osteoclasts uh, fish found evidence of irritation further away from the central lesion as the toxins uh, became more diluted here as uh, as i said um, as we move from site a then to B, in site A we had microorganisms, in site B we had more toxins and site C also we have toxins but they are slightly more dilute here. So the histological picture here is more one of activity preparatory to repair. Coming to the last zone which is a zone of stimulation which is characterized more by fibroblasts and osteoblasts which are, which are mainly the repair cells. At the periphery the toxins are very mild and they act as a stimulant here. In response to this stimulation uh, we find collagen fibers which are laid down by the fibroblasts. So if we look at the fish zone very carefully. The central zone is a, a zone which is site A zone of infection which has got more microorganisms and neutrophils and a lot of destruction happening. As we go from the central zone towards the outward, the toxins become more and more dilute and um, the, it becomes more of uh, um, reparatory than uh, destruction. So the, that is about the uh, zones of infection. So how this fish zone explains the uh, rationale of doing endodont uh, endodontic treatment, we will discuss now. So, the root canal is the seat of infection. Microorganisms are more present inside the pulp canal and um, they, do, they actually do not uh, are not very motile and then they invade the periapical area. They move very slowly by uh, multiplying their number. So, 
at the periapical area just at the exit the microorganisms are more and at this site the neutrophils uh, will uh, try to fight with the microorganisms so uh, as we move away from this uh, apical foramen more towards the uh, more towards the plains of periapical area we find only the toxins there so the microorganisms as i said are not motile they do not move away from the root canal to the periradicular area however they can multiply sufficiently to grow out of the canal um, the toxic products of this tissue necrosis may diffuse to the periapical tissue and can cause more destruction so as yes, the microorganisms gain access they are destroyed by the neutrophils but when the microorganisms are virulent and more in number they can overwhelm the defense mechanism of the host body and can lead to a formation of periradicular lesion but if these microorganisms are low in virulence or less in number, the neutrophils can destroy the microorganisms rapidly as they enter the periradicular tissue. And then what you can see is a chronic lesion or a chronic abscess instead of a rapid spread of lesion. The toxic products of microorganisms and necrotic pulp tissue are irritating and together with proteolytic enzymes released by the dead uh, neutrophils can lead to pus formation. At the periphery of the destroyed tissue, bacterial products are very diluted and uh, they can act as a stimulant to form a granuloma. Fibroblasts then uh, build fibrous tissue if in addition uh, they react with epithelial cell rest or malaises and if they are stimulated can also lead to cyst formation. Microorganisms like Fusobacterium nucleatum, Streptococcus mitis, Provotella intermedia uh, species are usually transient in the periradicular tissue. These transient invaders are completely eliminated by uh, neutrophils once the RCT is completed. So to conclude, root canal is usually the seat of infection. If the root canal is treated uh, and properly sealed, the periapical region will undergo complete repair and tooth can function normally inside the oral cavity then. One more theory which tries to explain the rationale of doing endodontic therapy is Cronfield's mountain pass theory. Cronfield compared a bacteria in the root canal as invading army which is waiting behind the high and inaccessible mountains. Behind the apical foramen is the mountain pass whereas he considered the periapical area as plains and granuloma or that, the, our immune response as the defending army. When there are few invaders which enter the plain through mountain pass, uh, the defenders, the neutrophil, uh, neutrophils will destroy them. When a mass attack occurs, a major battle will then ensue and defenders will lose. Only complete elimination of invaders from the mountain will eliminate the need of a defending army in the plains. So let's look at in the picture how the crown fields mountain pass theory act, uh, works. So uh, site one is the bacteria which are behind the mountain uh, so what is site one site one is the root canal area where we have the bacteria and uh, site two uh, uh, is the area which is a plain or periapical area and site three is a mountain pass that is between the from the apical constriction to the uh, apical constriction um, to the major apical foramen so if the bacteria are more in number in site one and also they are in highly virulent the neutrophils which are present in the periapical area and other defending army cannot uh, they are overwhelmed by this bacteria and can lead to um, spread of infection whereas if the number of bacteria the amount of bacteria in site one in the root canal is less uh, or they are of less virulence then the neutrophils can o easily overwhelm the bacteria and prevent the spread of infection this is what uh, Cronfield's mountain pass theory states in a nutshell, the Cronfield's theory states that when a root canal treatment is done, the reservoir of bacteria and the noxious products are completely eliminated and uh, whatever destruction which has happened in the periapical area will completely undergo repair. But if the root canal treatment is not done, these bacteria will keep on multiplying and um, they, they go beyond the mountain pass or the toxins travel beyond the mountain pass and cause the um, uh, periapical lesion and in 
increase in the size of the periapical lesion. So this is about Cronfield's mountain pass theory and uh, in uh, the, uh, the rationale of doing endodontic therapy. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. If there are any doubts, you can uh, contact me anytime during the uh, clinics. Thank you very much.